What's up everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood guitarist, Ernesto Fuentes. Now, for today's episode of Meet My Gear, I want to introduce you guys to a guitar that I hold very, very near and dear to my heart, and that of course is this beauty right here. This is a 2006 limited edition Gibson Les Paul Studio. Now. <clears throat> Now, of course, I, with my keeping up with the tradition of naming my guitars after female characters and different forms of media, a, as in literature, video games, movies, etc., etc., I named this guitar Daenerys. Now, again, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Wow, man, this guy's, you know, really a huge fan of Game of Thrones, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> but, uh... But there's a reason for naming her Daenerys, and that is, I mean, be, with this being my favorite guitar to use, <clears throat> and Daenerys, of course, being my favorite character in the Game of Thrones series, I decided it's to pay homage to Daenerys Targaryen, Daenerys Stormborn, the Mother of Dragons, etc., etc. <clears throat> Tribute by naming my guitar my favorite number one guitar after her. Now, the reason why I hold this guitar very close to me and very, as I said in the beginning, near and dear to my heart, is because when I was 17 years old, this was back in 2005. Well, yeah, I know, I'm old. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, when I started playing, my dream guitar was always a Gibson Les Paul, and the main reason being is because I've seen all these, you know, icons, you know, of rock and roll, you know, just playing Gibson Les Pauls, you know, guys like Jimmy Page, guys like Slash, guys like, you know, Gary Moore, and even, like, modern metal players like... Brent Hines and Bill Kelleher from Mastodon and Matt Heapy from Trivium, they all played Les Pauls and I always thought, man, I mean, I just, I love the, the aesthetic of the guitar, you know, it just looks really awesome and everything and then, of course, I got bummed out whenever I go to Guitar Center, whenever I went to Guitar Center back then and just saw the price tag on a Les Paul and I was like, I'll never be able to afford it, you know, and and I just, I felt sad back then, you know, just by looking at the price tags, but then fast forward a couple years later, and I found this beauty at a pawn shop, and the second I laid eyes on it, second I laid eyes on her, I just said, oh my god, it's a Les Paul, you know, and I just, I freaked out, you know, I was like, oh my god, like, and I asked the uh, lady at the pawn shop, I'm like, how much for this Les Paul? And she's like, 300 I'm like, sold. You know, and I instantly put that thing, put this guitar on layaway, and I started, you know, making my payments for it and everything, and now, here I am, you know, still in disbelief at being the proud owner of a Gibson Les Paul. Now, <clears throat> this guitar... I'm telling you, never leaves the house because she's my baby, you know, <laughs> and I never want to part ways with her at all, you know, but, but yeah, you know, and <clears throat> getting into the history of Gibson, which is quite the illustrious history, um, the, the company started in 1894 <clears throat> in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and this is, of course, one of the oldest guitar brands right next to C.F. Martin and the younger, the much younger Fender guitars. Now, or as I call the big three of American guitar manufacturers. Now, they started making folk instruments, you know, like your mandolins, your acoustic guitars, etc., etc. But it wasn't until the famous guitarist Les Paul 
came in and made and they started making his guitars hence the name of the guitar being Les Paul it's named after him now once the 1940s hit you know 1944 I believe they decided to they, they were bought out by the Chicago music industries or yes or CMI for short and in the 1950s, they hired Ted McCarty as the president of Gibson, which in turn led to the 1950s being what many would consider to be Gibson's golden era, which is where all the finest instruments were made, like all the best ones, including the iconic and legendary 1959 Gibson Les Paul Standard, which is still my dream guitar because of the history with a guitar now of course you get a ton of different players you know playing Les Pauls and then later on they released the SG model which is which I believe stands for solid guitar which is just really a more bare bones guitar which was of course in which ended up becoming famous thanks to guys like Tony Iommi who used an SG for their you know for a lot of famous famous songs and then in the 1970s they ended up moving from Kalamazoo to to Nashville Tennessee and that's when different companies that's when you know they started continue making guitars but over time they just sort of disappeared because it just didn't really feel the same well, it didn't really disappear, but, you know, just a lot of people stopped really using them, especially in the 1980s, you know, when, you know, Super Strats were a huge thing. Super Strats, like, like, my, my Melisandre, my Westone Spectrum SX. So, you know, and then over time, you know, people still use Gibsons, and, you know, it's still the iconic brand that it is buying out different companies and I mean honestly like I said it's a long history and I can just go on all day but I'm only just giving you the summarized history because I know if anything just if you want to know more about it just Wikipedia that so but yeah now getting into my guitar now being a Les Paul it's of course a mahogany back maple top which is just how I like it I just that's how I like my bodies because it just kind of adds that sort of harmony between light and dark and it just creates this magnificent sound ebony fingerboard I believe it's a mahogany neck no it's a set neck which of course means that the neck is glued onto the guitar it's not bolted on like you would ex you would expect from fenders or whatever other strat like guitar you'd find on the market 22 frets which is you know good enough for me uh, and of course it's got a tom and a rail and the cool thing about this is that and yes it's got a little cosmetic damage there but hey the scars add character um, now with this bridge in particular you don't as you can see you don't really put the the strings through the back of the neck through the back of the body I mean but instead you slide them on through and you tune them slide them on through these little holes here and you tune them so I mean it's a I mean it's really simple easy to tune easy to restring and everything um, but yeah you know it's it's a great guitar and I just absolutely love playing this thing now I'm gonna give you guys a little demo again same routine clean mild distortion overdrive so yeah so without further ado here it is on clean now of course I'm gonna do it on both pickups because they're humbuckers 
although and I and I do apologize in advance if the neck pickup doesn't sound great because for some reason the electronics on this thing are pretty shifty pretty iffy so all right so here goes my demo on Daenerys on clean on the bridge pickup Let's go for the neck pickup. So that was clean. Now let's go for the crunch setting or mild distortion. This time on the, again, bridge. <laughs> Time for the fun part. so much for checking this video out now it mean a lot to me if you guys would like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the little notification bell so you guys could get notified for any future with any future videos of mine so until next time this is Ernesto Fuentes your friendly neighborhood guitarist signing off all right Daenerys let's take it away <laughs> Stay metal, stay awesome everyone. <laughs>